Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We have a new car here that needs a wiring harness, so I'm going to do a short series on wiring harnesses, different types, what you should be shopping for, how to save some money, and how to install it properly. So a lot of guys dread uh, buying a wiring harness and installing it uh, on their own hot rodders. There's a lot of do-it-yourselfers out there. Those are the guys that I try to do videos for. Uh, trying to help you guys out, pick the right wiring harness, save some money, and get a good insulation going. So once you install something like this, the wiring should be good for the rest of your lifetime. Um, these old cars from the 40s, 50s, 60s, so on, um, the original style wiring harness is not safe at this point in time. We have cloth covered wires that are dry and brittle. We have even newer uh, coated wires that actually dry rot, get brittle, have bad connections, especially if you're on the East Coast like I am, or down in the South, uh, Southeast where there's a lot of humidity, stuff like that. Wiring harnesses are usually good for about a lifetime-ish, especially if they're uh, outside of a garage most of their life, like how a lot of these were daily drivers at some point in time. So let's get down to the facts. You need a wiring harness. You don't want to spend a million dollars. That's why you're watching my video in the first place. There's a lot of really, really good brands out there. There is a Painless, Rebel Wire, uh, there is Haywire, and there's Easy Wire. There's some names you might not uh, might be used to, some names you might not be used to. That's what you need to be looking up, and that's what you need to be figuring out which one of those is best for you. Uh, oh, there's also American Auto Wire that's pretty good as well. Um, but you have choices, and I'm not going to pick it for you, but I'm going to let you know um, from my experience, what I like better. So for me, my favorite one out of all of those is the Haywire 21 circuit wiring harness. Uh, this is middle ground. The price is middle ground. It still has good quality. The quality between this and the painless really isn't that much different. The painless is a little bit more expensive, but it comes with some waterproof connectors. This, you can buy your own waterproof connectors, but it doesn't come with it. But you don't need that in every application where everything is waterproof. Um, this is going to save you a lot of money. Now, what I can say is the best instruction manual is painless. Good, really, really good instruction manual is Haywire. Then Easy Wiring. Um, even though the name's there, the instruction manual is just not there. Um, if they created a better instruction manual for their wiring harness, they would be ranked higher on the list. Speedway is down there with easy wiring. Um, American Auto Wire is a good mutual ground, but they are tend to be more expensive than Haywire. I don't want anyone wasting their time. Once you've done about 15 different wiring harnesses, you start seeing that a lot of these are similar. Most of them base the whole wiring harness off a GM steering column, GM turn signal, stuff like that. So that's what you need to be prepared for. Now, if you get a generic wiring harness, 21 circuit, like I said, this is my favorite wiring harness, Haywire 21 circuit. I put this in almost every single vehicle that I build. If the customer brings me a wiring harness, I'll use theirs. But if I pick it, this is what I'm buying. And if you start using the same wiring harness over and over and over again, if you use multiple, if you build multiple cars, you'll tend to get a favorite as well. You'll get comfortable. You won't have to read the instruction manual anymore. You'll just wire it up off of memory. That's what I like to do. That's why I keep using this. Um, like I said, good quality. Now, if you want to get a specific, like if uh, what we're going to be doing in this video is a 66 uh, Fairlane four-door. Now, you can buy a 66 Fairlane specific harness, but they don't sell as many of it because it's so specific. They're only selling it to people who are building that car, so that one's going to be way more expensive. Um, I don't know the exact price off the top of my head, but I'd be guessing seven, eight hundred bucks if we wanted the specific wiring harness for this car. Or I can buy a wiring harness that's generic. People can buy it and put it in any car, so it's way cheaper because they sell way more of it. You're talking more like four hundred dollar range. Um, so yes, I'm gonna save those two, three hundred bucks. Get something that's generic. Cut some wires short that I'm not going to use. Yeah, that sounds great to me. Um, it's no time difference installing the two different uh, ones is exactly the same um, what you're gonna be missing out on is specific connectors for the blower motor that has a awkward three prong that year for four something like that that's what you'll be missing out on 
but you can just put spade connectors on that. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look trashy. It's still professional and you're saving yourself, a, you know, a buck or two. And if you're a do-it-yourselfer guy, that's what it's all about. You want to find a good product, save some money, get it in. That's easy. That's why I go with Haywire. Now, when it comes to your build, I don't know what you're building, but you have options. Within those different companies that I said, they have great options like for uh, the Blue Martian behind me. This is a Roadster pickup that I'm standing right next to. This isn't going to need electric windows. It's not going to need electric fuel pump and all sorts of stuff like that. It's not going to need all the extra electrical um, accessories. So what I could do is go straight to the Haywire website, buy an electrical block. It comes with no wires. Super simple. Only a couple circuits. We're talking about power for the coil, power for uh, electric fuel pump, a couple blinkers. Really, really simple stuff that you do on something like this. I do a lot of pre-1959 cars. That's mostly what I do. And a lot of it is roadsters, race cars, stuff like that. That's why I like going to the Haywire's website and buying the very simple uh, fuse boxes. Because these cars, a lot of them didn't come with fuse boxes. Now, when we're going over to 12 volts, uh, that's considered unsafe. How many times have you heard of a vehicle, like a 79 pickup truck as an example, burning to the ground because the manufacturer's uh, original wiring harness didn't have fuses. It's very typical for horn relays, stuff like that. Cars burning down on the ground because of that. Big deal. We want to save your car, get it reliable, uh, so you can go out and drive it across the country. So let's go over absolute must-haves for this process. I don't want you to be trying to do this kind of stuff at home, not having the right tools and stuff like that, and uh, getting this more complicated than it needs to be. What you need is a couple simple things. You're going to need a crimper. This is the crimper I like. It's from uh, Milwaukee. You can get it at Home Depot. Very simple. It's a nice, good crimp. Uh, wire strips, whatever you like to use. For me, auto strippers are fast because, I don't know, we're probably going to do maybe 100 more than that. Connections. You're going to strip over 100 wires during this whole part of the process. You're going to need something better than a razor blade uh, to strip this many wires. This 20, 30 bucks. It'll save you a lot of time. You're going to need a test light. You can get a Harbor Freight or you get a nice one. It doesn't really matter. They all work the same. Nice test light. You're going to need a voltmeter of some sort. This is an auto uh, voltmeter. So it only does automotive electrical. It doesn't do household, but it auto ranges itself. I like that. Also, more importantly, it's an ohm meter. Um, during this process, you'll need an ohm meter uh, more than a voltmeter. I'll wire a whole car up without a battery, but if I have an ohm meter, I can make sure all my switches are working. I can make sure the wire, or the power from the switch is going to get to its destination. So if I pull the headlight switch out, I can put an alligator clip on the back of the headlight switch and I can come up to the headlight with the other wire and make sure that voltage is capable of getting there. All the connections are there. That's what you're trying to find out. I can wire a whole car with the ohmmeter. I know I said that twice, but that's how important ohm meters are very very big deal and lastly the thing you need more than anything else is an understanding of basic automotive electrical um, if you don't understand automotive electrical theory you should probably pause this video and get through that first you need to understand how a circuit works you need to understand how grounding switches relays work you need to be able to grasp that to do this accurately and uh, not fall into mistakes and have issues. So I would hate for you to get a whole wiring harness in your car, all the wires ran all over the place, and a lot of things aren't working and you can't figure out why because uh, you don't have the capability of backtracking and double checking connections and understanding how a circuit works. Um, and I don't mean that as an insult, I mean that as I wanna save you time and headache so make sure you figure that out first, get a good grasp on that once you get that. Um, putting this wiring harness in is very simple. There's a difference between hard and time consuming. I find uh, that putting wiring harnesses are very time consuming, very labor intensive, um, but they're not complicated. It's very simple once you understand circuitry. Now, the very first thing you wanna do when you get your new wiring harness in the mail is read the instructions. By no means am I telling you to do anything that goes outside the instructions. I'm basically going to tell you the instructions, but I'm gonna put it in real life, in video, in perspective. So that's my goal here in this series. Read your instructions. I kind of explain which companies have bad instructions, which one have good. Painless has the best. 
I hate saying this out loud, but easy wiring has the worst, uh, and so on. Haywire is right in the middle. It's good, it's clear, it's easy, it's what you need, and uh, it doesn't make it such a big of a deal when you're a newbie or uh, first time wiring up an old car for yourself. All right, so the next step here with your uh, new wiring harness, what you wanna do is unravel it from how it came in the box. So we're gonna get this unraveled here. Now we'd actually start grouping this up in sections, like mentally, understanding where this is gonna go, where that's gonna go, stuff like that. So give yourself nice, nice room. Uh, some people recommend to do it on the floor, some people recommend to do it on a table, like what I have. I just have like a little pop-up table that I throw up for uh, projects. So uh, we start seeing stuff like this. Like I said, it is labeled from the top all the way to the bottom to the fuse box. So what you want to do is start reading what's on these wires here. So horn switch, a turn flasher, so ignition switch power, all this right here, this is all um, ignition switch power. So this is the back of the key. Uh, this is uh, to the horn. This is all steering column right here. So this is all steering column. That's why it's the shortest one from the fuse box. This should be pretty close to the steering column. Now these are broken out in a couple different looms. So like I said, pull a loom out, understand where it goes. Um, you can spend the time you want to to zip tie the loom up into its own little uh, thing here. Clean it up if you want to. It makes routing it a little bit easier. And uh, just try to untangle it from its mess, understand it, move on to the next one. So here's this loom. Feels like it's the longest one. Let's see what's where this is going. I'm gonna guess this is the tail section. So this loom breaks into three, a couple different looms. So this one big loom breaks into a couple different looms. This is what you're trying to figure out. Left high beam, right high beam, right front signal. So all this is gonna go to the front of the car. All this is gonna to go to the front of the car. So I'm gonna loop this up into its own thing here because it's kind of out into a mess. And this is the point of the process where we're just gonna kill zip ties, guys. We're gonna go through a lot of zip ties. We're gonna waste a lot. A lot's gonna go in the trash. That's just part of the process. Keep this uh, clear and simple. Don't worry about wasting zip ties. So I understand what this is, and I know where it's going. I'm going to zip tie this together real quick, move to my next loom. There's that loom. These are loomed together here. Let's see what these are. Oil sending unit. I can already tell you where that's going to go. Fan, electric fan. Temp sensor. This is all going to the motor. Pretty straightforward there. So let's wrap this one up. We understand this loom. We know where it's going. Let's just wrap it up. This is going to make, also wrapping all these up makes it easier installing this uh, fuse panel in the car. I know what that is. I understand it. Zip it up, move to the next loom here. You're going to cut one of these zip ties and run it. So I get the fuse box mounted where I want it to go. I'm ready to run the wires to the motor. I know how it's going to get there. Cut the zip tie, run that. Don't find a big wasp nest of wires underneath the car, or underneath the dash. So there's that. Here's our next set of wires. Let's investigate here. Horn, coil positive, choke power, alternator exciter, Alternator power, solenoid power. So here we go. We know where that's going. That's also going out through the firewall. Depending on how your car is set up, maybe some of this will run out of a different area. Maybe it won't. But we understand it and we can move on.
Boom, now we have this thing completely separated into its sections. Once I get this fuse box mounted, I can grab my section, know where it's going to go, cut the zip tie and route it by itself without worrying about one of these other wires getting into my loom that don't need to go in that direction, something that needs to go forward, something that needs to stay in the dash. Because it's really frustrating when you get everything in its direction and you pick a wire out, one of these, getting ready to start hooking things up, it's in the wrong spot. <laughs> That's very frustrating. Now we have that all figured out, where everything's going to go, it's actually time to get hands on the car. Now at this point of the process, uh, you could be like me, very excited to rip out the old wires and get started on the new wiring harness. But slow down. You need to take a breath and try to label as much as you possibly can uh, on the whole car. Get a pen and some blue tape. I, reckon I, I recommend blue tape because it doesn't leave nastiness on the paint like uh, masking tape. But anyways, before you start cutting this stuff out, you need to label it. You need to understand what went where, what needs what. For an example, I have my starter solenoid over here. I labeled it ground all the time on one side. Then on the other side, I labeled key uh, cranking power. So that's what actually flips the solenoid uh, on the right side and it needs ground all the time on the left side. So stuff like that, or your voltage regulator that's up here on the firewall. You need to start routing these wires and start making notes. Even write yourself a little wiring diagram and a uh, little pin pad. So. So you know what wire went where on the alternator and you're not just trying to figure that out later. You actually have that information. Now a lot of stuff like a wiper motor that's up here on the inside of the cowl, you can't find a wire diagram that tells you exactly what wire is what, what connector is what, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes on certain models, you just have to figure that out for yourself. Not all the information is on the internet, uh, even though we like to think it is. It's not. So you need to be careful with stuff like that. I could rip all this wiper motor stuff out and all right, well, I just need to know where power goes, where the switch goes later on. And I try to Google it. Sometimes you can't find it. So I need to do an ohms test and figure out what wire is doing what, where it's going on the switch, all that kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff you need to know. You don't have to have a battery in it to figure things out. You can get a nice ohm meter. I have a, a nice snap on ohm meter that I, I use and you can figure out where the wire starts and where the wire ends and start leveling. Uh, draw yourself diagrams of connectors, all sorts of stuff like that. Later on, you can cut the connectors out and wire it up yourself, but you need to know where all that wire is coming and going from. All right, so like I said earlier, um, installing these are very time consuming. So what I'm gonna do is try to separate these into smaller videos. Hopefully they don't get too long. Uh, if I did a whole video explaining that part of the process and explaining how to install it and explaining how to run like headlight switches and relays and stuff like that, this will be a very long video. I don't want to do that to you guys. So uh, that's going to be it for this video. This is going to be a short and quick series. Um, hopefully I can post everything this week. I don't want to post one every week. If you're actually trying to figure this out, that'd be pretty frustrating. So I'm going to try to post them in a short period of time. I want to give a big shout out to Haywire. Uh, I'm going to put their website at the bottom of the screen right here. Make sure you check them out. They have everything you need, guys. Switches, relays, harnesses for a bunch of different uh, type of setups race cars, classics like this. Go and check them out, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Get out your garage and get your shift together. Let's